praise you, God. As you're finding your way to your seat, just shake somebody's hand, tell them you love them this morning. There's no place like the presence of God. No place like this place. So good to see everybody. So good to have our online family with us today. Those worshiping from home and across the country and across the world. Church in Temecula gets broadcasted and watched. Uh, last time I had looked last year, we were viewed in 19 different countries. From right here. From right here. So thank you for your faithful giving, which allows us to broadcast. Thank you so much. So good to be here. And here we are, 2024 is already zooming. But have you ever added on to your house or have you ever remodeled? Maybe some of you, I was not fortunate. My parents were able to, they built the house that I grew up in. And they had to, to make room, they had to dig out the soil in our, our house. I remember they brought in the big tractors and they dug out. In Minnesota, it's, it's let me just explain, it's a lot colder than it is here. And so every house in the Midwest, in the Minnesota, has a basement because you have to build the foundation that goes farther than the freeze line. If you don't know what that is, that just means the cold, real cold. And so if you go, they basically said this, if you go down to the freeze line, you only add on about three or four more feet and you can have a whole nother level of your house. So it makes financial sense. But it takes work, it takes finance. I remember my dad, my grandpa, and my uncles literally built the house from the ground up. But it takes finances. It takes a lot of work and planning. And thanks to HGTV, everybody pretty much has seen the show Fixer Upper. See, we, we had a remodel that we didn't plan to have a remodel. But we had, I think I explained this in the past, we had a, last winter we had a roof leak. That was exciting. That was fun. And then just when we got the roof fixed, with much, you if you know, living in California and putting a roof on your house, it's not cheap. Just when we got that done, Sister Glenda, we had a slab leak. Doesn't it get any better than that? So Sister Ashley has turned into Joanna on Chip and Joanna on Fixer Upper, and I had to tell her, I'm not Chip. You're going to have to call your Uncle Tony. You're going to have to find somebody else. But, right, it's like we, we watch this show on TV, a 45-minute show, 42 minutes, whatever it is, without commercials, and they take this house from tore up, ugly, trashed, from that to their dream home, right? That's their goal. We want to. But isn't it interesting? They always ask them, how much are you willing to pay for the house? But what's your all-in price with the remodel? <laughs> right? Because Joanna's going to come in there and she's going to say, we got to take this wall out. You got to take this out. It creates dust. And cr but what the problem is we watch in 42 minutes what takes them six months. I just watched this one recently. I must be really bored. Um, we're remodeling so it's like we get ideas. They bought this house they call the castle. And it was like four or five episodes, whatever it was. But when I Googled it to see how long it took them, it took them two years to remodel that house. But we're getting to the part, place now where our house is becoming back to a home. And we're like, it's worth it. We've made room. We've had a mess. We've done things, but now it's worth it. And we're going to talk about a Shunammite woman today who I don't even know her name. We call her the Shunammite woman. But she taught us an important principle here called making room. And you'll understand that in a moment. If you have your Bibles, turn to 2 Kings 8 and uh, 2 Kings 4 and 8, 8 through 10, 2 Kings 4 and 8. And it fell on a day 
that Elisha, he was the prophet, passed to Shunem. Now you know where they got the name Shunammite woman. How would you like to be named the Temecula woman? The Marietta woman or the Hemet woman? Where, uh, past the Shunem, where was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread. Now she didn't trap him or tie him down or, but invited him, pressed on him to come. And so it was that as oft he passed by, he turned in thither to eat. Verse 9, and she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. In verse 10, let us make a little chamber, a room, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be... When he comes to us, that he shall turn in thither, that he shall go there. This morning, we're going to learn from a nameless woman that we're going to make room, the principle of making room. Would you lift your hands? God, right now, just use me for your glory and your honor. Help us press out distractions and worries. Lunch. All these things that are coming down work tomorrow. And let's just focus here, God, for the next few moments on you and what you want to do in this place and inside of each and every one of our hearts and minds. Somebody say in Jesus' name. You may be seated. So one day Elisha went to Shunem where there was a wealthy woman who urged him to eat some food. I feel like she urged him like my grandma urged me. My great-grandma would urge me to eat. So she would, my, my great-grandma loved to cook, but she did not like to have leftovers. She did not want to. So we had to eat everything. And let me just explain. Her pancakes were more like funnel cakes than they were pancakes. My grandma's from West Virginia, and she cooked your pancakes in bacon grease. And we don't know how she lived to 101. Everything they tell you, about healthy eating, she did the opposite, and she lived to 101. So sometimes I don't know if we're the idiots or they were the idiots back then. Because she ate donuts, and she had bacon every day and of her life. And I'm like, so are the doctors lying? Right? You ever wonder? It's like, wait. They ate what they wanted back then, and they still lived forever. I think they just need to enjoy life. Sometimes I, pastor's like, I would love to eat that right there. But we want pastor to stick around, so please don't sneak him any sugar. Please don't sneak him any sugar. So whenever he passed by, he would go there to eat. He would go there to hang out. And so she said to her husband, hey, this is a man of God. This is a prophet. This is a holy man of God. He keeps passing by our way. He's constantly coming by. She said, let's make a room for him. So whenever he comes, he has a place to go. He has a place to be. So one day he came there and he turned into this room, the chamber, or a room, and he rested. And the prophet said to his servant, said, call the Shunammite, call the Temecula. (laughs) Right? We would just be so offended in our day and age. (laughs) If you were just called, if you were known by your city or by your neighborhood. And so he, the servant went and got her. And He said, the prophet says to her, you've taken all this trouble for me. You've done all this work. You've spent all this money. You you got plans drawn up. You got approvals by the city, and you built this room for me. He says, will you have me speak a word on your behalf? Would you have me go to the commander of the army? Would you need anything? And she says, I dwell among my own people. The man of God, the most famous prophet of her time. He was the predecessor to Elijah. This is the most spiritual anointed leader in Israel. The prophet. And he's asking her if she wants or needs anything. And she says, I'm good. So he's passing by Shunem. Every time he passes by, this rich woman, well-to-do, invites him in to come eat. 
they have a friendship. They have a relationship. And the, she makes a room for him, talks to her husband. If you notice that she's pretty much in charge. She just tells Chip to build a room on top of her house. Brother Al, we know all about that, right? If you, if you need a chip, Brother Al is here. He can literally build anything you need. So when Joanna, my Joanna, tells me to build something in my house, I call Chip Navarro right here. But the servant comes and asks her, and she doesn't need anything to what she thinks. She's very similar to us in our current day and age. Most of us got here in some sort of a vehicle today. Most of us, probably in our freezing cold weather last night, turned the heater on. Today, when it gets a little warm, you'll turn the central air on. You came in a car and it was chilly this morning, so you turned the heater on. We're pretty much well to do. And the prophet, the man of God, God's here this morning saying, is there anything you need this morning? And we're saying, we're pretty good. We got everything we need in America. I got... So let me keep going in the story. I, I, I didn't have time to read all the scriptures, so I'm trying to, trying to tell the story a little bit. I don't need you to go to the commander. I don't need you to go to the mayor. I don't need you to do anything for me. But the servant to the prophet tells the prophet she has no child. She has no son. Who listen to this. Sometimes we're so blessed that we don't even realize that there is a miracle out there for us. The Shunammite woman was so blessed, she didn't ask God for anything, but the servant to the prophet tells the prophet she has no son. If it was up to the Shunammite woman, she would have never got her miracle child because she would never have asked for it because she had everything she thought she needed. How many of us have everything we think we need, but we're missing the biggest, best blessing that God has for us because we don't even realize what we need? So he calls her. She stands in the doorway. Interesting, she stands in the doorway. She built the hot room. It was her room. But she respected the presence of God, and she did not go in the room. She paid for the room. She drew up, the, drew up everything. She decorated. I guarantee you she decorated the room. I don't know one woman that would let her husband decorate the room without a big opinion. We don't get to vote. Sister Ashley asked me, do you like those curtains? I said, I, I like it. Yeah, I like whatever. Yes. Is that the right answer? I, she's just putting new curtains. Oh, I'm going to get green. Okay, okay. She goes, do you care? I said, no. Can I just get a bigger TV? <laughs> In the remodel, can I just have a bigger TV? That's all I want. And she said no. And so, <laughs> even though she paid for the room and made, and made the room, the moment the prophet occupied it, it wasn't her room anymore. <laughs> and he looks at her and says, you don't have a son. He's watching, watch this. At this season, about this time next year, another version says this. This time next year, you will embrace a son. What does the Shunammite woman say? She goes, no, no, oh, prophet, don't lie to me. Now, that sounds strong. Like, we wouldn't probably say that necessarily to the man of God, like, don't you lie to me. Uh, what, well, my understanding is more like, don't mess with me. Don't get my hopes up. Don't joke around about this. Because the man of God began to meddle in an area that she was uncomfortable in. Sometimes where your biggest miracle is, is where your biggest disappointment is. And in order to get to your miracle, the man of God has to work through your disappointment. Ooh, now this gets hard. 
Your biggest miracle is on the other side of your hurt and your frustration and your disappointment. So if you want God to work to your miracle, you're going to have to come up here with your disappointment because I don't want to go home with my hurt and my disappointment and my frustration anymore. I'm not content to be living the blessing of, see, she was content to live in her blessing of 2023, but God had a brand new miracle for her in 2024. I want to know, is there just a few people in this place that said, I didn't even know I needed a miracle today. I didn't even know I needed something today, but I'm not content to stay in 2023. God, bring on something new. Bring on something fresh. And I'm going to finish that sermon next week. So come back next week for part two. This is kind of part one. I learned in the first service that there's two parts to this message. Because we didn't get to the end. Now watch. You guys will get the better part of the message. So, Your miracle will be born the moment you make room for what's holy, what's prophetic, what carries a double anointing. What carries your healing? What carries your deliverance? What carries your peace? The moment you make room in your life for your miracle, that is when, and you make room for those items, then that's when the miracle is born. The Shunammite wanted a son above everything else, but she didn't ask for it. What do you want above anything else that you have not asked God for? So what did Elisha embody or what did Elisha represent? The prophet Elisha was the heir to the prophet Elijah, okay? Elijah's mantle, I know it gets very confusing. The Old Testament likes to mess you up. There's an Elijah and Elisha, okay? Elijah went to heaven and his mantle fell on Elisha. And this is Elisha in this part of the story. Elisha was the, the woman, the Shunammite woman, she was very uh, she was very sensitive. She sensed that this man was a holy man of God, that this man was a prophet. He was the leading voice of this generation. He was the inheritor of the double anointing. In other words, when she made this room, she did not make room for a man. She made room for the very presence of God in her life. She made room for the holiness of God. She made room for the, prof the prophetic voice of God in her life. She made room for the healing in her life. She made room for the anointing in your life. Here's God's word for somebody today. If you want to see your miracle, if you want to see the birth of what you've been praying for, what you've been fighting for, what you've been hoping for, what you're believing for, then all you got to do this morning is make room for that in your life. You got to make room in your heart for God. You got to make room in your head for God. You got to make room in your actions, in your interactions, in your reactions, in your thoughts, in your feelings, in your words. Make room for God. In other words, let me help you. You got to stop cursing the stuff that God wants to bless in your life. You want to curse the person that abused you? You want to curse the person that took advantage of you? You want to cur quit cursing those things and let God come in and bless you and heal you and deliver you and set you free this morning? Stop saying my family is demonic. Stop saying my family's going to hell. Stop saying my marriage is horrible. Stop affirming what the devil is doing and start declaring what the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is doing. Let me declare a few things to you. The same God that did it in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, he's the same healer. He's the same deliverer. He's the... It's the same God, the Holy Ghost that was alive in the book of Acts is here today. Your loved ones that look like hell, walk like hell, talk like hell, you need to start declaring you are righteous. You are holy. You're God's. You're not, you need to pray over them and say you are not the devil's. No, heaven is your home. Heaven is your destiny. Declare over your children and your children's children. They're not drug addicts. They're not alcoholics. 
They're not whoremongers. No, they are the children of God. These just aren't junior hires up here. You need to declare over these kids. They're not just, you know, I hope you all wore, did you all wear deodorant today? Don't raise your hand if you did not wear deodorant. I got some high schoolers up here too. Okay. I got one that admitted he didn't wear deodorant. Jesus. Keep your arms down. We're going to leave that to the parents. Sunday morning checklist. But I know junior hires can be awkward, right? But they're not just awkward. These are God's children. There's a preacher up here. There's a prophet up here. There's a prayer warrior up here. Your next worship leader is not just some kid in true kids. No, that's an anointed little girl that's going to get up right here and say, here, now, here, now. Why don't you pray over them and prophesy and start declaring in the name of Jesus. You have to make room for what is holy, what is right, and what is the perfect alignment in the will of God and the word of God. 1 Peter 1, 16, be ye holy, for I am holy. you got to make room for the holy things of God. Make room for the prophetic. Make room for the truth in your life. Make room for the truth of the future of your family and of future generations. What do you mean? 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Your eye has yet to see. Your ear has yet to hear. And your mind has yet to imagine the wonderful things of God. Your eye hasn't seen it. Your ear hasn't heard it. You can't even imagine what wonderful things God has for you. I think you don't believe it. Let me tell you again one more time. The word of God, which is forever settled in heaven. Your eye has yet to see it. Your ear has yet to hear it. And your mind can't even imagine what wonderful things God has. You have to make room for the double portion of anointing. The Holy Spirit, or we say Holy Ghost. Don't be scared. Holy Ghost is just the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. I know King James, Holy Ghost. Some of you, if I don't say Holy Ghost, I say Holy Spirit, you think we're going non-denom or something. Okay? Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Same thing. Just like Jesus and the Father, let me explain. Same thing. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's what the Bible says. Okay, we're not going down that right now. Double portion anointing. Operating in you, with you, for you through you like never has before yes 2024 there's going to be dark times and we live in a dark world but we serve a bright god we serve a bright god first john 2 27 for you have received the anointing through the holy ghost which lives inside of you you have received the anointing Before God delivers a miracle, he demands from us that we make room. If your mind is filled with negative thoughts, if all you can think about is condemnation and shame, these are not the patterns and in the alignment in the will of God. you got to renew your mind daily. You're never going to see your miracle born because your miracle will be born the moment you make room. In other words, do not ask God for something you have yet to make room for. See, I feel in every marriage, (laughs) there's a hoarder (laughs) and there's an OCD person. And God just sits in heaven and laughs. I won't tell you who. Is the OCD one in Pastor and Sister Durant's. And who the not so OCD one is. Just go look in their cars. <laughs> and some, uh, I better not, I want to stay married. So sometimes when I get in my wife's car, I'm like, babe, you're turning into your mother. bag I'm like we are not the bag lady 
We're like, we got every bag in the car. And then she tries to blame the kids. Well, I have the kids. You never see them. We go down that path. But there's one that wants to throw everything away. And then there's that one you still have the first dirty diaper your child ever had. Like, and you're like, oh, it brings back such great memories. <laughs> My dad left, so now I can tell the story. He's not here. My dad's surprise was here this morning at first service. He's not here now. So he literally, babe, how many boxes did he mail us? He mailed me eight boxes of keepsakes that I don't even know what's in them still to this day. They're just stacked in my garage. Oh, he goes, there's Tonka trucks in there. There's yearbooks in there of people I don't even remember and don't care about. And now I have a garage full of hoarded stuff that got passed down to me from my dad. So we have this thing here at the church when we're cleaning out. So we'll, the guys will text me or call me or I'll be down here. Oh, hey, we haven't used this in two years. We need storage. What can we? So the pastor, can we get rid of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw it away. Throw it away. And the guys used to ask. They don't ask anymore. Hey, should, we text, should we text Sister Durant? No. <laughs> the answer is no. Do not text her. Don't ask her because then we're going to have to sell it on Marketplace. She's going to keep it in storage here or she's going to put it in pastor's closet at home. No. Or when they're cleaning out the garage and he's trying to throw everything away and she's wanting to keep everything and they have a pile of the undecided. You ever had a pile of the undecided? One spouse says we need to keep it and one spouse wants to throw it. So I'll say, Dad, just take her to eat. I'll throw it all away, and she'll never know. She has never asked one time for the things that we've thrown out. I hope he stays married. But the dynamics. You have a junk drawer. Oh, who has a junk drawer? How? You have to go through the junk drawer every year. Or husbands, how many times your wife cleans out the closet to take stuff to Goodwill or give away to somebody, and they still have the tags on their clothes. They bought three years ago, but they won't part with it because it cost them something. They're not even, it's not even sentimental. They've never even worn it. But I might need that one day. All the things you might need one day are taking the place of what could be your miracle. I'm speaking to all the spiritual hoarders here. I'm speaking to everyone in this room. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> Not to throw anybody under the bus. We live in California and we don't judge people by the laws. Be honest. Be honest. How many of you have stuff physically in your house you don't need? And I know what's true in the physical is true in the spiritual. How many of you have stuff in your spirit that you don't need there anymore? That is just taking up room that, that you could have the very presence of God. But instead of having the presence of God, you got something that happened to you in 1972. And I know it hurt. And I know it's bad. It, but do you want to live in 1972? Or do you want to move into your blessing and your miracle of 2024? I don't want to live in my bitterness of 1982. I want to move into my healing of 2024. So if you want God to move in your life, you got to make room spiritually. All the spiritual hoarders who find themselves with no room for God's next because your now is filled with past shame. Your now is filled with past offenses. 
Your now is filled with past condemnation. Your now is filled with unbelief. Your now is filled with depression and anxiety. Your now is filled with confusion and unforgiveness and disappointment, discouragement, and despair. And if somehow I manage to miss whatever you got in your room that you don't need spiritually, you just need to declare it right now that I'm not letting this hold me back. I'm not letting this keep me down. I am not letting this keep me from the very miracle God has for me and my family in 2024. You have no room for the greater glory because your inside is traumatized and your outside is toxic. But let not your heart be troubled, my friend. You came to the right place. You came at the right time. And the only King of kings and Lord of lords is here this morning. I want you to know there is an expert that knows how to remove clutter. He knows how to remove things in your life that are just occupying space but have no purpose for your future. He knows how to remove junk and replace it with joy. He knows how to remove pain and replace it with praise. He knows how to remove your trauma and replace it with a testimony. He knows how to remove wounds and replace them with worship. He knows how to remove your despair and replace it with destiny. He is the expert that signed the contract and he signed it with his own blood. So I'm here to tell you, you're in the right place at the right time because you're going to move into your destiny. There is no spiritual, emotional, mental, or relational trash that he can't remove today. He is licensed, bonded, and insured. He cleans out all the jump, the junk, and he makes room for the glory of the Lord. And by the way, he is so confident in his work, you can Google him, you can Yelp him, and you can Angie's list him. He has all the references you need. And there are just a few references in here. Lift your hand if you know that he ever removed junk out of your life, if he ever came in with his glory. Lift your other hand if you serve the God who is the expert at removing past and removing shame and removing disappointment and removing pain. I serve the God who did it when no one else could do it. When everybody else gave up on me and I gave up on myself, God came in. God showed up. Do you need a healer? Do you need the master physician? He's going to take your worst and replace it with something so much better. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you willing? Anybody in the back willing? You're going to make room for God today. Because we're about to do something. This isn't just pragmatic talk. Are you ready? Are you really ready? God, I give you permission to clean my house. I give you permission to clean my thoughts. I give you permission to get rid of everything in my life that is just taking up space, that is just keeping me from my destiny. Are you ready? Are you going to make room? Because the miracle begins the moment you make room. Anger is not going to control you. Your temperament will no longer rule you. Are you willing to make room for the holy? Are you willing to make room for the glory? Are you willing to make room for your future? Where your children's 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 children will occupy the very promises of God. Are you willing to accommodate the anointing that destroys yoke? Are you willing to accommodate the anointing that shifts atmospheres in your life? And that exalts Jesus so he can set captives free. Are you willing to give him permission today to remove and replace? If you give God permission to remove what he needs to remove and replace what he needs to replace, would you stand? Would you stand? If you're not serious, don't stand. Musicians, just come play softly. Lift your hands right now. Lift your hands. We're going to have a breaking and we're going to have a changing right now. And the miracle is going to start happening right now. The miracle is going to be birthed now. Lift your hands. Somebody say, in Jesus' name, 
by the power of the Holy Ghost. I give you 100% permission to remove what you need to remove. Build what you need to build in order to make me ready. Woo, say that again, in order to make me ready. Somebody say, in order to make me ready for the miracle, for the miracle, for the miracle coming my way. Come on, lift your hands and just begin to praise him right now. Woo. Come on, come on, come on. It's moving right now. Your miracle will be born the moment you make room and you stop worrying about the cost. Isaiah 54. When God gave Israel a word regarding the birth of a new season for Jerusalem, all the other nations were thriving. They're in abundance. They got everything they need. Isaiah 54, 1 says this. Sing, O childless woman, you who never gave birth. Break into loud and joyful song. O Jerusalem, you who have never been in labor. For the desolate woman now has more children than the woman whose lives with her husband, says the Lord, who lives with her husband. Everybody around you is pregnant. Everybody around you is giving birth. And you're barren, Israel. So God says, I'm going to tell you what to do. You know what he tells them what to do? Sing, oh childless woman. Break into loud and joyful song. Because you were about to give birth. So don't come in here and ask me, why do you shout the way you shout? Why do you sing so long? Why do you raise your voice the way you raise your voice? Because we're about to see the glory of God like we've never seen the glory of God before. So I want you to shout even though you can't see your miracle. I want you to sing in, in, in about your miracle. In other words, God says this, praise him when you don't see it. Worship me when you don't see it. Sing when you don't see it. Because every time you praise, every time you worship, what are you doing? You're making room. Every time you rejoice, you're making room. Every time you lift your voice, lift your hands, you make room. Every time you pray, you're making room. Every time you walk by faith and not by sight, you're making room. I'm going to end, I'm going to end. Psalm 22, 3, God inhabits the praises of his people. So you don't worship because of the miracle. You worship to get to your miracle. You don't praise to get because you are blessed. You praise to get blessed. In your barren, desert, dry state, I come to tell you what God said, sing, praise, shout, loud, joyful. And then, 54, 2 and 3, enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, spare no expense. Verse 3, for you will soon be bursting at the seams. You sing like you got it all. You praise like you got it all. And then he says, go enlarge your house, build an addition. Make room for what I'm sending you. Make room for what I'm sending you. And don't worry about the cost. Don't worry about the cost. You're bursting at the seams. Psalm 23, 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup in the presence of my enemies, in the presence of your enemies, your cup will overflow. Not unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly 
above all that we ask or think according to the power. Get ready, it's going to overflow. Your overflow will be so great that your enemies will be blessed. Even your haters will come to Jesus. Look, look, I'm ending. The Hebrew phrase for bursting at the seams means this. That it will break. It will break the container. It will break what is holding it. Here's for somebody. You've led a life where other things have broken you. Other people have broken you. Life has broken you. And I'm here to tell you that comes to an end right now in the name of Jesus. From now on, the only thing that will break in you is the overflowing glory of Jesus Christ. No more broken dreams. No more broken relationships. No more broken families. No more broken children. No more broken old people. You're going from trauma to testimony. Here, we're going to get to part two next week. But when the atmosphere gets pregnant like this with God's presence, this is when his promises begin to just be poured out. We all admitted we got stuff in our hearts that we need to make room for God. Step one for your miracle season in 2024. And I'm done. I'm done. Start, the, start it up. I'm done. But I'll tell you right now, you need to run down here because I don't care what is inside of here that is holding me back from 2023, but I gotta, from, from my miracle in 20, I gotta make room. I gotta make room. I'm not even saying sin, but I'm just saying, God, I gotta get distractions out of here. I gotta get hurt out of here. I gotta get pain out of here. I gotta get bitterness out of here. You ought to run. You ought to run. I'm telling you, you need to run because the word of God says make room this morning. Make room for your best year. Make room for your anointing. Make room for the glory of God. I invite you. I invite you. I invite you. I invite you. I'm calling you. For a brand new day. I'm calling you right now. If you furnish your life with the Holy Ghost, your life will constantly birth miracles. Come on. Come on. You want to birth miracles this year? Come on. I'm not staying in 1972. So we'll prepare the atmosphere. I'm declaring over my marriage. I'm declaring over my family. We're making room. We're making room. Oh, anything can Come on, make room. Anything can happen. Make room for your miracle. Anything can happen. Your life, fill your life with love. Fill your life with truth. Fill your life with peace. Right here, right now. Anything can happen. Anybody else? Anybody else? There's room for you. There's room for you, mate. With lifted hands. God, I gotta make room. I gotta make room for the miracle. I gotta make room for the glory. And we want more. We want more. Come on, come on, come on. And so it's your year. This is your family's year. This is your year. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll make yes, room. Yes, yes, We'll prepare the atmosphere. So I'm going to walk by faith, not so by sight. This year, this year. And I'll pursue you in. It's your year. We'll pursue you without fear. Until every change. Until every change. Yes, 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 yes. I see you, I see you. Anything can happen. It's your year. Anything can happen. It's your year. From the the moment that you walk in. Anything, anything can happen. Oh, anything. Anything can happen. Oh, it can happen. Yes, yes, anything yes. can happen. I'm gonna burn From the, the moment that you burn walk in. Yes, yes, yes. Anything, anything can happen. Oh, it can yes, happen. Yes, yes, yes. Anything can happen. Anything. 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 Anything.
declare your healing. We declare your healing. Lord, you heal. We declare your healing. We declare your power. We declare your power. We declare your power. Lord, we declare your power. going to do in your life. Visit us at truevine.live and become a part of what God is doing at Truevine, what He's going to continue to do in your life. We want to thank you for joining us today and believe with you that God has spoken to you through the word and worship. If you decided today that you would like to give your life to God or recommit it to Him, we'd love to connect with you pray with you and be here with you, strengthening your relationship with Jesus Christ, whether that be through a Bible study, baptism in Jesus' name, or striving to receive the infilling of the Spirit. We want to connect with you, see the amazing things that God is doing and is going to do in your life. Visit us at truevine.live and become a part of what God is doing at Truevine, what He's going to continue to do in your life. We want to thank you for joining us today and believe with you that God has spoken to you through the word and worship. If you decided today that you would like to give your life to God or recommit it to Him, we'd love to connect with you, pray with you, and be here with you, strengthening your relationship with Jesus Christ, whether that be through a Bible study, baptism.